Um, this judge today said that this was going to be the hardest decision he's ever made in his professional career, whether or not to move the trial from Moscow, where I'm standing, the college town, to perhaps Boise. Uh, how do you think this is going to go? Which way do you think he's going to rule? Well, I think the judge was entirely correct that this is a critical and uh, significant decision in the case. Uh, in the common murder case, if there ever is one, uh, every argument is a state Supreme Court argument, but obviously this one, with the significance and the range of issues, scientific and jurisdictional, uh, this will be a U.S. Supreme Court decision. Uh, it balances the defendant's constitutional right to a fair trial uh, with the community's right to have a public trial in the jurisdiction where the crime was committed. If I had to guess, I would guess that the judge will likely, based on the showings today, even though the prosecution did a very good job in uh, rebutting some of the contentions, I would guess that the venue would be moved simply because nobody here can suffer the likelihood of a second trial. Uh, it has to be a situation where the judge will decide, I would guess, uh, on the side of safety, preserving uh, what happens by acknowledging the issues in the community, although I vigorously dispute that there's a mob mentality in Moscow, Idaho. Yeah, and he obviously has to be careful. I mean, there'll obviously be appeals with any death penalty case, and if he doesn't move it, it is something that could come up on appeal. Susan, I want to ask you something. There, there was something that really struck me today. There was this psychologist that testified on behalf of the defense who said, even if they think that they get a jury that is not biased and says, look, we'll come in and do our best, and, and we're only going to listen to what's uh, said in court, um, is it possible that if, if the juror is from Moscow and listens to the evidence and wants to acquit Koberger, but is nervous that if they acquit, they have to come out and then live back in this community and be known as the person who let Brian Koberger off. The psychologist said there is no one that's going to want to do that. Do you think that comes into play here, Susan? I do think, I think that's a realistic point of view. I think that that is something that I would be concerned about too. You know, and we saw even like the Casey Anthony trial here um, that when they pulled in uh, jurors from Pinellas County, and, you know, after the trial and Casey was acquitted, what did they do in Pinellas County? They had signs everywhere that says, don't bother jurors eating at this restaurant. So they were ostracized back into the community just because of their verdict. But what they were doing was their civic duty. So, I mean, there's a huge weight that's that's on each one of those shoulders. I certainly wouldn't want to be, be there. I have to make that decision. Yeah, and they can do everything they can to try to protect the uh, the the identity of the jurors, Susan, here. Um, but it's a small town. I mean, I've been here for a long time covering the case. Everybody knows everybody. People are going to figure out, oh, my cousin was a juror, that kind of thing. Uh, Molly, um, they talked a lot about media coverage today as part of uh, the defense's case that they want the trial moved. They did this telephone survey. They hired a company to do a survey and ask people what they thought about the case, what they think would happen if Koberger was acquitted. And I want to read you some of the responses because they're some of them are pretty crazy. They say that they were told they'd burn the courthouse down. Outrage uh, would be a mild description. They would probably find him and kill him. Uh, and another person said there would likely be a riot and he wouldn't last long outside because someone would do the good old boy justice. Um, I mean, honestly, uh, you know, Molly, again, having been here so long, getting to know the community, it, it's hard to, I mean, it, it seems a little bit like an exaggeration. It was like they, they picked and chose which, which responses they wanted to, to use for their argument. Well, I do think that we heard a lot today in terms of the thoroughness of methodology and how good uh, the survey was and how the analysis was technical and precise. And I think the defense did a very good job of putting all of that before the court. Um, that's part of the analysis. You know, you can't have a survey of potential jurors that is unto itself biased when you're trying to see whether or not the community is biased. But I do think that these responses are persuasive in that the court has to look not only to protect the the trial rights, the right to a fair and impartial jury due process for the accused, but also concerns like this are part of the totality of the circumstances that courts look at when they decide change of venue. So I think that those pieces of responses to the survey, as shocking as they were, they're entirely relevant and important to this court's decision.
Thanks for watching. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your screen. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.